Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me as I share with you some important information coming out of the UK with regards to dementia diagnosis. Uh, this is this is important stuff, and it was from the Alzheimer's Research UK. Um, dementia is still the UK's biggest killer. Where do we go from here? So this was published just a few days ago, looking at the amount of people who died in relation to dementia. Now, to give you some context, prior to 2020 or 2019, depending on when you say the pandemic started, my whole research focus was on resolving and understanding the primary pathophysiology about dementia. And I was just about to put the whole thing together when the pandemic hit. <clears throat> Well, this is what caused me to do the research on COVID, is because I knew that if I could figure out dementia, I could definitely figure out COVID, which is how I came up with the autoimmune principles. But the point is, is that after five years, almost six years, I haven't shifted back to focus on dementia. And the reason is simple. I have recognized that technically post-pandemic, dementia is different. And this is the point that I am saying is that what they are seeing now in the UK is likely to be the tip of an iceberg. This is the start of an avalanche. So when we look more closely at what they said, in 2024, more than 76,000 people in the UK died in relation to dementia. And this is a significant number because it is considered to be the highest um, number one cause of death. And you have to look at the trajectory when you look at the numbers here. In 2022, it was 74, 261, then 75, and now 76. Now, these may seem like small rises in terms of um, numbers, but the reality is that when you look at where it went from 2020, because in 2020, dementia was one of the leading causes of COVID-related deaths, meaning that people with dementia had a higher risk of dying from COVID. So what we saw was a significant increase in numbers in terms of the 2020 part of the pandemic, then a drop off after, because most people had died, and then a rise again in 2022, 2023, 2024. What you have to realize is that there is a piece of the puzzle that is missing in relation to why did we see such a significant surge after 2021? Why didn't it settle back into its normal pattern? And why does it seem that this is going to be one of the biggest surges. We're just on the brink of it at the moment. And this is what I am saying. This is part of the reason why I chose to continue to focus on COVID. Because if you don't understand the implications that the COVID pandemic will have on the diagnosis and the manifestations of dementia, you will not be able to stop the trajectory. Now, the truth is, I don't know if even if we fully understand everything, if we can, because this is so serious. So just to give you an idea as to where this is coming from, always remember, this is the virus, SARS-CoV-2, and on the surface are spike proteins. They're about 25. This spike protein is the driver of immune dysregulation when it came to severe COVID-19. It's just coincidental that they picked this very immunogenic part of the virus to then use as the main strategy to control the pandemic. I'll not say that I think that that was uh, grossly uh, not thought through, especially when they used it broadly. But here is the bit that is extremely important. The spike protein on its own can trigger some issues. And we know that in relation to looking at outcomes in terms of mortality after people had been infected or even injected. But there is an important piece of the puzzle that very few people grasp. 
and it's this when the body the immune system starts to digest the spike protein as it cut it up there is a piece in the middle that has prion or amyloid like capabilities and it can't digest this so easily so this is like this is a glass that was causing problems when you shatter it this shard can't easily be removed and it causes great problems in terms of the immune system and so this is a very important point because what it means is that with every circulation with every other exposure to the spike protein in some people not necessarily everyone they are gathering little shards of spike glass that's the only way that i can describe it these little shards are building up and they trigger all kinds of problems including things like netosis where the immune system these neutrophils will then break out and form little traps and this is part of the reason why so many people are walking around with little clots circulating inside of them because the immune system is doing its best to try and control this very serious issue now when it comes to the implications of that this is now where i take you down a road that is extremely concerning concerning and this is where it's linked in my mind to dementia once you understand that for many cases of dementia it's all about the amyloid deposition in the brain and the brain is struggling to be able to clear this amyloid so anything that predisposes or accelerates the amyloid is going to worsen or speed up the diagnosis or presentation of dementia so when we look at what happens in terms of the brain this is an example of what we call a neurovascular unit this is the blood vessel and on the surface of the blood vessel are cells that we call pericytes and these make like a, sur a, a, a surrounding they make a, a wrap around the blood vessel and the blood vessel has very tight junction so nothing should get through that it doesn't want and then on the outside of it you have astrocyte um, end feet this is a very very sophisticated system and the reason it's there is because the brain is a very privileged site nothing that should not be there is allowed in the brain because it doesn't have a very active immune system and any kind of immune response in the brain tends to lead to damage and so the brain protects itself mainly by closing the doors putting that barrier in place that um, almost the vault it locks the vault so that you can't easily get in now there is a condition called cerebral amyloid angiopathy and I think that this is the this is going to be the piece of the puzzle that we're going to see more and more what is happening here in this section of a brain is that wherever you see these little black dots on a very special MRI sequence uh, called the SWI, you will see where there are accumulations of amyloid around blood vessels, which shows up as these tiny little dots. The reason it's relevant is because these dots weaken blood vessels and therefore they can bleed. So the patients who have them oftentimes are at risk of bleeding. And that's why it's relevant. However, it's an indication of the fact that amyloid is being deposited in and around the blood vessels. And when we think of that shard of the spike protein, that piece that's so difficult to digest, that is going to get deposited as well in these blood vessels. And it will look something like this. So normally, you have some amyloid deposition around the blood vessel. This is stage one of the amyloid angiopathy. And in stage two, you can see more is there and the blood vessel is not as reactive. Stage three 
is where it's all around. There is no bleeding, but look carefully, cognitive impairment. And then in stage four, these start to bleed along with cognitive impairment. So this bit is the first part, and this bleeding follows along. So the two are combined together. And this is the reason why I'm predicting that these numbers are just the beginning of a massive surge in dementia cases. And you know what? I think these cases are being undercounted. And the reason I say that is that certainly in the UK, the time frame for someone who has seen that there are issues with a loved one, parent, or a relative, and refers them to the memory clinic, it doesn't happen immediately. And so there is a time lag. But what you will be seeing happening is that some people are having dementia presentations that are like on steroids, in the sense that their deterioration is so rapid that they don't get a formal diagnosis of dementia. And so in reality, I predict that the numbers are way higher than they even realize. Additionally, when we look at the pathophysiology, these shards spike. You could call it like a prion. For the time being, we'll call it just amyloid triggering. And what that happens is that it will get inside, break through this very protective blood-brain barrier. So this is what it would look like in the cross-section. Normally, nothing gets past this. But because of the damage, you start to have deposition on the inside, just around the blood vessels. This then weakens them. This increases the pressure on the brain with amyloid deposition causing dementia and also increases the risk of bleeding in the brain. This combination of factors, when we take into consideration that there have been about five years of exposure to spike protein from multiple sources, this in, in no way is going to be easy to resolve. And this is part of the reason why I continued to focus on COVID rather than focusing simply on dementia. Because if you don't understand this, if you have no way to mitigate this, there is nothing, no drug, no therapy is going to work. And this is part of the reason why I could predict that almost any attempt based on prior research before 2020, if they try any research on dementia now, it will not work. And it's simply because they are basing their research on a previous paradigm. We are in a completely different world at the moment. The way how disease presentation is going, it requires a completely different way of thinking. So when we look at it and we think about these numbers, and when we realize the implications of these numbers, because as you can see from this figure here from the Alzheimer's Research UK, dementia is the number one cause of death. Higher than heart disease, COPD, strokes, lung cancer. And I anticipate that this is the one that is going to escalate off the scale in the next few years. There is no easy way I can think of at the moment to resolve this. Because I understood dementia before. I understood the issues with regards to amyloid de um, deposition and why amyloid was being formed and the mechanisms that we could use to try and resolve that and protect the mitochondria in the brain. All of that I've had to put on the back burner because something so serious has occurred that it literally makes the previous concerns we had about pathophysiology child's play. This is how serious it is. And I don't know what to tell you at the moment because we're still trying to find solutions. I'm still trying to understand how we can mitigate this trajectory of disease. At least I understand that this is going to be complicated. At least I'm aware 
that the standard thoughts and paradigms are unlikely to occur or to work. But for those who continue to pretend that we are anywhere in a normal situation pre-pandemic, this is what the whole scientific and medical community is doing now. They're trying to get back to pre-pandemic periods. I can tell you, at least certainly for dementia and many other disease, diseases, there is no going back. We are going to have to figure this out, start again, and understand a new disease paradigm, something we had not seen before. This is effectively where we are, and there is no easy way to get through it. All I can say is that to stay ahead of the science, stay on top of what's going on, be aware of the complexities, and get sucked into thinking that things are just the way they were. This is a new world, and the only way that I can find these answers is by autopsies, which they are still not doing. They don't want to know, because I guarantee you, if they ever start to do autopsies with brain biopsies, and they stain for which part of the spike protein is going to be stuck in these blood vessels, causing this kind of damage, they don't want to know, because the implications are so serious. But there will be answers, there will be solutions, and the most important thing, as usual, please reduce your risk of getting infected this winter. As you go about your Christmas uh, activities, protect, protect, protect. Hum away, use the science, try and see if you can reduce your risk of systemic exposure to spike protein. We can do this, but it will take some time. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon, check the links below.